Hakadosh Boker Or Bekim Malachat Two. Siman Two. We are on page eighty, day twenty-three. Alacha Gimen. Educating children. Once a child is old enough to understand it, he or she should be trained to dress in a modest manner. 69 says the Chesel Alafim rule that when someone needs a restroom, he must make sure that he's alone before relieving himself and must lock the door to prevent others from, from coming in. He added that children must be trained to be accustomed to act modestly as well. This is brought down by the Ben Ishchai, the Kabachim Sufedi Yalkud Yosef. The simple reading of the as it appears here is that this applies a child enough to dress himself. The Chesel Alafim, however, states clearly that he was referring to even to toddlers. It is likely that this stringently applies to using the restroom, but not to the method of dressing children, obviously. Toddlers, small children. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Next. Alakha number four. Torah etiquette demands that a person avoid giving a sloppy appearance to others. Right? He says, when dressing, one must make sure not to put on the garments inside out, meaning upside down, right? Like inside out. So he says, if someone discovers that he's wearing his garment inside out, he must take it off and put it on properly. This is especially important if he intends to pray. Okay. So he says that the Gemara says of Yochanan taught the definition of genuine Torah scholar is someone that lost an item simply because he claims that it is his is one who would take off his garment if he discovered it that he put it inside out and he puts it the right way. Rashi explained that he does things this so that it's the hems and the stitches should not be visible to the onlookers. This is the source of the Alakha found in Shulchan Ruch. The Prisha explained that a Torah scholar must be careful to appear neat and orderly since he represents the Torah knowledge he possesses. If he does not obey this rule, he will likely cause people to despise the Torah and its scholars, and then he will incur the death penalty in heaven. See the Mishnah Burah. But, okay, fine, but this is only about Tamir Chachamim. What about everybody? Right, because the Gimara, which is the basis of this halacha, is only about rabbis. So he says, ordinary people, this, this rule seems to apply to Torah scholars only, but the ordinary people may wear it inside out. The Tur and the Shukar Ruch, however, did not make any distinction between any person and the other. The priest explained that the Torah scholar's obligation to take his garment off if he discovers it inside out, as Rabbi Yochanan did. All people, are, however, are obligated to see it to, to, in the first place that they do not dress in a garment inside out. The distinction is repeated by the Taz and the Mishnah Bura. Meaning the exact opposite. That Tamil Chacham, it could be that he was so busy in his learning, he didn't even realize. So he put it inside out. The second he realizes it, he has to turn it off. He has to take it off and, and put it inside out. He says every other ordinary people, they have to pay, pay attention to the beginning that they don't do that. So he says, other poskim though, rule that this halakha applies equally to ordinary people as well as Torah scholars. Everyone should consider himself to be a Torah scholar when deciding one's manner of dress. Certainly, right, he says, one must make sure that one's garments are right, uh, right side out when praying and to correct the situation if they're not. In fact, the Chesed Lafim rule that if someone prays while wearing his garment inside out, the prayer is invalid and it must be repeated. Those are powerful words. Think about it. A person just, you know, has the shirt inside out. And yeah, the prayer is invalid. Powerful words. Okay. Fine. Next, set, number five, undergarments. It is best to make sure that one wears all one's garments right side out, including one's undergarments. Meaning because if the svara, the logic was that you don't see the hem, but undergarments anyway, you don't see so what's the problem? If a person wants to put on his undershirt backwards or his underwear back, what's the problem? He says, no, also you have to be careful with that. He says, one would think that the lacha states here applies only to the outer garments and they're visible to other people. But it doesn't apply to the undergarments. The prisha, however, deduced from the wording of the Shulchan Ruch that it applies to all garments. Therefore, if someone discovers he's wearing his undershirt and set out to take it off the layers of clothing and put it on the correct way. This halacha is repeated by the Mishabra, the Kavachim Sofer. It is clear from the language of the Poskim, however, that they assume that the part of the undergarment is visible to others, and that was why they ruled this. The response to Elifam again in the, in the Sefer Ilaned de Chaye ruled based on this that since undershirts worn nowadays are not visible to other people, it is not necessary to take it out and correct it. There is support for this leniency also the Lekit Yosher, authored by a disciple of the Turmat Adeshin. The Sefer Yom states that the Lachaz is as follows One must never wear a garment inside out, no matter whether it's what one might, might uh, he says, no matter what reason one might have for it. Even though it seems like a harmless act, since the garden is hidden under the clothing, it is still very important to take very care that every garment is the correct way. In particular, if one is a Torah scholar, right, and dignified or dignified personality, Hashem's secret is revealed to those who fear Him. So the Hashem It appears from this 
the lecha applies even to other garments that are totally visible, invisible to others. What about harming one's memory? So this is actually one of the reasons. It's not good for your memory. So he says over here, how do we explain the logic of the Seder Ayom? It may be connected to the popular assumption said by the Eshel of Rambochach that when one wears a garment inside out, it harms your capacity to remember what you have learned. One's garments represent the super, the supernal light that surrounds one's soul, as Arizal taught. If this is true, it explains why the Seder emphasized that it's most important for Torah scholars. None of the post have ever mentioned that wearing garments inside out affects one's memories. Even so, it is important to be careful since the Seder Ayom is so strange about it, meaning it's brought down to Seder Ayom. That it's bad for one's memory. So it's obviously be careful, even though the other poskim, nobody really men mentioned it. What about socks? So he says, many people do not pay attention whether they wear their socks the correct way inside out or not. When Rechaim Kanievsky was asked about this, he did not give a definite reply. Regarding the lechav donning two garments at the same time, the Rishon Letzion ruled that it applies to socks as well, explaining that the supernal light is affected by one's socks just as it is affected by other garments. If so, it likely would be the rule that also it should be the socks inside out as well. Nevertheless, this is simply con conjecture since Achornim, other than Eshel Abraham, made no mention of it at all. If someone chooses to be careful not to wear the socks inside out, he gets a heavenly blessing. But basically, yeah? Fine. What about reversible garments? Meaning garments that you could wear reversible, meaning like both sides. So since a reversible garment is made to be worn either way and has no visible and finished hems, it is permissible to wear either way. This is the ruling of Tarata, of, uh, Tarata Shulchan, as it appears in the Eshel Abraham, concurs with it. In fact, he added that even when if one decides to always wear it one way, it is still permissible to wear it the other way. You know, nowadays they do it like, you know, with the belts or this or that. So, no problem. Okay? Next, halakha. Uh, halakha number six. Anyone with the reputation of being a Torah scholar must wear neat and clean clothing. It is forbidden for him to be seen wearing clothing with stains or grease marks. Our sages taught that if a Torah scholar wears garments marked with a stain, he incurs a death penalty deducing this from a play on the words of the pasuk. Whoever makes others hate me loves death. He says, the Pasuk says, Kol av, Al lemasni the ones that make that hate me. So he says, that means basically whoever hates me loves death. He says, no, the other ones who other who causes other people to hate me. So for the same reason, a Torah scholar must make sure that no unpleasant odor emanates from his clothing. If he does, people are likely to comment on those who study Torah are indecent or uncivil. A Torah scholar must also not wear overly elegant clothing with satin bands and gold trim as if he was a king. On the other hand, he must not wear ragged, worn clothing either. He should dress in a simple, neat and clean clothing. Okay, so 72. The, the word for stain is revav. The Rebbe of David of Tolna noted that the numerical value of this word is 204. Revav is 204. The same as the word Sadiq. Adding a new dimension to our sage's teaching, he explains, any Torah scholar who purposely de uh, deceives others, giving the impression that he's a tzaddik far greater than he actually is, who's a tzaddik on his garments only and not in his heart, incurs the death penalty. So it's the other way around also. Meaning that here, the guy is showing Kiel who's a tzaddik, and really by meant he's not. So therefore, it also is the death penalty as well. Okay? Next, La Salacha. One must not done, right? This is done two garments at the same time. For example, if a shirt sleeves are already tucked into a sweater, when one puts on the shirt, one puts on the sweater at the same time. This must be avoided since it can be harmful to one's memory. Memory. Likewise, one must not take two hats, one instead of another, and place them on one's head. So it says you like this: the Shara Kavanot warns us not to done two garments at the same time explaining that each garment adds an element of supernatural protective light. If someone dons two garments together, supernatural light that was meant to accompany the inner garment does not have a chance to come, leaving the person explode to the, to the klipa, forces of the evil. The klipa is the, main, is the cause of the main forgetting of the Torah. Now what about the two hats? So he says, this is the ruling of Rov Chaim Falache, explaining that the same reasoning applies to hats as well. Based on this, he complained about the common practice in his time of people inserting a fez inside a larger hat and placing them on their heads together. He warned that this practice might affect their memories adversely. This reasoning is practical for us as well. One must not insert one's kippah inside one's hat and then put them on together. Meaning don't put the kippah inside the hat and then put on the hat. You have to have the, the kippah on and then the hat on the kippah. 
you put the kippa, the hat on the kippa. Don't take the the kippa, put it in the hat, and then put them both on together. You could put one kippa on top of another, but don't put them together. That's what we're saying. So, Meaning entirely, right? <coughs> That's another thing. One minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. So he says here, the hat and talit. The Eshel Avraham of Ochach ruled that it is permissible to place one's hat and one's, on one's head together with one's talit. He explained that the talit covers one's body and the hat, right, covers the entire head. It does not matter that part of the head is covered by both garments. The protective supernatural superna light is not blocked from its place in this case. Okay, so that was the Eshel Avraham, meaning if one's adding, there's no problem. Okay? The response that Tzitz Eliezer pointed out that according to this, it is forbidden to insert the yarmulke inside one's hat and don them together as mentioned previously as well.